I bought all these cameras for some reason. There's quite a lot of them. Ugh. Oops. Well, let's just get these into some kind of order, shall we? That's a bit better. So we have two Instax Mini 9s. We've got three Tomy Kai, Key Kai picks. We've got three Polaroid Snap Touch. We've got a Polaroid Zip printer, an Instax Mini Link printer, an Instax Mini 11, and two Kodak Printomatics. So these were all sold in a job lot of customer returns, which means that some of them are probably working. So I'm going to have to go through them and I'll filter them into piles of ones that are working, ones that aren't working, and I'll, I, yeah, you get the idea. So let's do that. Right, well that took ages. I've gone through every single one. There's 14 in total, and I've made all my findings on this sheet of paper here. There are a few of them that I think are going to work, but I don't have the films. For example, this one. It comes on, it flashes, but obviously there's no film in it. This one doesn't work, it's got flashing orange lights. This one is the same, it's got the same fault, so those two orange flashing lights. This one I think works, but the shutter sticks. I don't know, because it hasn't flashed or anything, but the shutter doesn't open fully. This appears to charge up. It is low amp draw, but I'm guessing the battery's completely flat. The Kodak Printomatic, this one here charges okay, and this one doesn't. This one buzzes while it's charging, and the amps sort of drop out. So it charges for a split second, amps cut out, starts charging again, amps cut out. These key picks things, they're all mechanical. There's no batteries, there's no battery charger, there's nothing really. You've got this primitive scroll wheel for pushing the paper through. And essentially what you do is you take photos using your phone. So kind of pointless. I think there's nothing wrong with them. All the parts are there. You basically put that bracket up here, rest your phone on the top slide the shutter down and roll it through. I'm guessing they've been returned because they're a big steaming pile of dust. Nanure. The Polaroid snap touches, the pink one, does appear to charge. The screen lights up to say that the battery is charging, so I just need to leave that on. It does beep when you turn it on, uh, but yeah, it won't let you take a picture, but I'm guessing because the battery's completely flat. This one does absolutely nothing, and this one looks brand new. It's still got the sticker on the screen, but when you put the charger in, no amp draw whatsoever, so that'll be interesting. If that one is working again, I can use that one to help me fix that one, potentially. And this is the Polaroid Snap without the touch screen. And again, that one does appear to charge up. It's also got some paper in, which is nice. But it doesn't... Well, let's see, it's come on now. And it makes that pretty noise. Oh! I did not expect it to do that. I didn't do that before. Oh! It's doing something! What's it doing? Oh. I think it does work. Yes, we have a lovely picture of some of the cameras that are on my desk. It's a bit washed out, but I don't know if that's going to get better. And then finally we've got this Instax Mini Link, which does appear to charge absolutely fine. We get lights on here. Uh, again, I've got no film for it, so... I'm assuming that's going to be okay. I've got some film on order. And that's it. So I think I'm going to start on the Polaroid snap touches, because I think that one might be interesting, the fact that it doesn't charge up at all. So let's get rid of all of this. And there we go. We've got the two Polaroid snap touches. So when we go to charge the pink one, we get 0.94 amp draw, 0.0. There we go, it dropped to zero. Screens come on, it says battery charging 11%. So that has gone up, it was obviously on 0%. It's still not coming on though. So you press the power button. It makes that little chime, but nothing comes up on the screen. Now I don't know if 11% is enough battery. Wait, it now says 10%. Um, but I would have thought it was. Yeah, so I, I don't think that one's working either. It doesn't appear to turn on. This one, however, does absolutely nothing. So you plug it in, absolutely zero amp draw, no lights, no noises, no nothing. So I think I'm going to start with this one, 
And then if I can get this one working, it'll help me fix this one. That's the thinking, anyway. Right, so what, I mean, I don't know what's going to be wrong with this. Because the screen, I, I would have assumed it was the screen, but the screen illuminates when it's charging. But yet we get just absolutely nothing on the screen when you try and turn it on. But, let's see if we can get into it. Well, I can see one screw in here, and I can see one screw there, which looks like some kind of security bit. Let's start with this one, see what happens. Obviously, I'm not an expert. I've never been in this thing before. I've never owned one. I have no idea what I'm doing. Please don't copy me and all that jazz. It's the motherfucking DOS. You know I'm rocking with the SSF. On this fix, no stress. He bought these returns for 80. I'm afraid he's gonna lose himself. Like Slim Shady. If I can't put Donkey free or TV. Flipping to that, don't you see? Just like the mother flipping rebounds to this mix, and cooey jingers to the cauldron of fix. Stirring some Anthony D, now we're cooking. And Dr. Princess Wizard, tall and good looking. We need more mother flippers in this batch, and a little bit of mother flipping badger squatch. A dollar of celestial road, that's not absurd. And a tiny little bit of Tim Osman. Stir it all together, but before we pour, garnish the top with Ante Lord. Is complete, ain't no doubt. Not really sure what that was all about. But before we go, I guarantee you'll want to hear about the HHG. Big Adam's Fox, Color Candle Burr, Tarot Burton, Mackie, and Flynn Major. Coming up, Mr. JJ, Buddy B, Money, Stuart Coles, Chris, Infinity. Chris, Jack, his eyes, Newton, Hines, and Hall. Esther and Keaton, Kill Switch, that's all. Alice, Mike, and Troy, Frensky, Friends, Bad. We've reached the Wuthering Heights, like Kate Bush. Apparently Wuthering means the wind blow. Not that that matters. Anyway, have a monkey Joe Tokyo. Booyah! <laughs> so we've got a Fuji 7.4 volt. 1100 milliamp hour battery in there. Let's see what charge is in that Multimeter in voltage DC 7.6 volts. So yeah, it's low, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean that should be enough to turn it on shouldn't it? Just pop it back in. There we go. All right, let's see what it does now All right, so It still makes that noise but Yeah, we get nothing on the screen It's very weird. I think I'm gonna have to go a little bit further into this so let's carry on tearing it down. That's interesting. It's Alps. Isn't that the brand that make the uh, thingy sticks? Thingy sticks? Yeah, the analog sticks for uh, for the PlayStation and Xbox controllers. Right. Well, still none the wiser. Right, we've got another board underneath and it's a little Lego connector that connects the two boards together. That's got components on both sides. Wow. This is a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. All right, I mean, I, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to fix this because I, I don't think there's going to be a short or anything on it because it's, it's charging. It's making a noise. It's just not, you know, fully turning on. I wonder if it might be a software issue. In which case, I've got no idea how I'm going to fix that. I was hoping to see, you know, like a ribbon cable that was not in properly, or I don't, I don't know what I was hoping to see. Right, just in case one of these ribbon cables wasn't sat properly, I'm just going to pop everything back in now and see if it behaves any differently. I mean, if that Lego connector wasn't in there correctly, for example. And maybe it's, you know, if it had been dropped. I don't know. I'm clutching at straws here. I'm going to let it charge and see if it charges up more than that. It's obviously dropped to 5% now, and that's quite a big drop. And the battery doesn't look swollen or anything, but I'm going to leave it and see if we can get it up to, I don't know, maybe if we can get it up to 40 50%. See what happens then. Okay, so let's see where that battery's up to now. 
21%. So it is climbing. I mean, it's been on for about 20 minutes or so. It's obviously going to take a long time. Let's just try turning it on now. Oh, that's a different noise. Oh, yes. Okay, not enough paper. That's because there's no paper. All right, I think that's working. I don't know whether that is because I took it apart and put everything back together again, or whether it would have just worked if I'd have charged it up more. Let's pop some paper in it and just see if it's going to print. I think I've got a sheet here. Let's take a picture of Dave. And now we've gone back to that. Battery's dropping very quickly, so we're at 16% now. So I wonder, yeah, it might just be a battery problem. But I'll tell you what, while that's charging up, let's take the other one apart. Right, let's see what's in this battery. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Completely dead, and it does look a little bit blown. What's interesting is I think it is two 3.7 batteries because it's giving 7.4 volts it doesn't like two different battery packs that one looks blown that one looks okay hmm i wonder if we take the battery out of this one pop it in here whether it will start charging let's give it a go all right let's plug that one in now see if that one behaves any differently yes 0.96 anything on the screen Yes. <laughs> wow, I think this one is brand new because it's even asking for the language there and everything. This must It must have had a faulty battery in it from new. Must have done. Wow. Okay, well that's interesting, isn't it? Or is it? I wonder if you can purchase these batteries. Yeah, I found one here, but it's twenty six ninety nine, which is quite expensive, really. I think these things do retail, I don't know, they're, they're over £100. Yeah, there's one on Amazon there, £159.99, so they're not, they're not cheap. And, I mean, I only paid 80 quid for the whole job lot, so if we can get both of these working, then, you know, I'm quids in. Now, I'm not convinced about this battery, but I'm going to leave this and I'll see if I can get it up to 100%, and then I'm going to see if, if we can get a picture taken with this one. This one will just be the same, I think. So if I need to order two batteries, you know, maybe it's worth it. If I can get away with just ordering one, obviously that would be better. Uh, I was just messing about with it then and I can now smell burning. And the amps have really dropped down. I'm going to disconnect. Oh, it's still drawing something, even with the battery disconnected. Hmm... I think I might have killed this. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> it's killed itself. Don't think this is going to come on now. It does come on. So what was this? What's the smell? Something is definitely burning. Let's see if it still charges. No, see that? It went out. I'm going to pull that out again. Yeah. Let's see if anything's getting warm on that board. Because it shouldn't still be drawing amp, surely. Right, we've got something getting hot here. 40, 45 degrees. There's a little chip there. Let's get this under the microscope and have a look at that chip. Right, it was this chip here. I mean, it looks okay. Can't read the writing on it. It looks like 8668713. Here, I can't find anything online about that chip. Let's have a look, see if there's any shorts around it. Multimeter and continuity. We've got these capacitors here. I can't tell whether I'm touching the shield there or not. I definitely smelt something burning. And the fact that it's still turned on, to me, means it's likely to be the battery management chip. And I suppose that kind of makes sense. If that one is is faulty from new, then if it's got a dodgy battery management chip, that battery will have probably failed. And me putting a new battery in has sort of kick-started the chip again, but then it's properly failed. I think it's burnt out. I don't know. As usual. 
Right, I think I'm going to try swapping the boards over in these two. So I'm going to put, take the top board from this one. Assuming they're the same, they look it, and the top board on this one. And then we'll see, yeah, if it still does, if this purple one still does the same thing, then we know there's a problem somewhere else. But I suspect it is just that chip. So let's do that. Right, so if I plug this charger in now without a battery connected, this should not draw any current. It's making a noise. I don't like it. I mean, the noise sounded like something over on the printer side. Let's plug the battery in and let's try it. Okay. 0.9, it's not making a noise now. Battery charging. Right, well, let's leave that battery charging. Let's see if we can get that up to 100%. And then if I can get this one working, fantastic. Okay, let's try and power it on. Nice. Right, now let's try and take a picture of Dave. Come on, Dave. Yes, we've got a picture of Dave. It's a terrible picture, but let's try and print it. Number of copies, one. Printing. Oh. Oh, he's making a noise. Oh, here it comes. And there we have it. You're out of paper. Yes, I know. I can only put one piece in. A terrible picture of Dave. Right, well, that works. So I'm going to charge that up fully. And in the meantime, in the interest of science, I'm going to take apart this battery pack and have a look and see if it's two batteries and whether we can potentially get away with just buying one as a replacement. Wish me luck. Well, that's the one that's blown. That one doesn't appear to be. Let's just go straight up to these contacts here and see if, yeah, see what the voltage is. Voltage DC. Yeah, that's 1.8 volts in that side. I'm going to guess there's nothing in this side. Yeah. So I think that one's okay. Can I just get one of those? I just don't think it's worth bothering, to be honest. And I've got one working one out of the two, so... I might come back to that at a later date. Okay, let's move on to something else. Right, well, let's stick with Polaroid. And this is the Polaroid, what's it called? Polaroid Zip. It appears to charge low amps. Well, I've had it on charge now for a bit. Let's have a look, see what the amperage is now. I mean, it might be fully charged. You, you never know. Oh, it's got red light. Okay. I reckon it, it was low amps just because it was completely flat. That seems to be taking a healthy charge, doesn't it? Right, so how do you use this? I presume you have to connect it up to my phone. Right, well, let's see if we can pair this thing up. Polaroid zip, there it is. Is that it? Is it done? Right, we've found the printer there. Let's try and print a picture of my cats out of some jeans. It's making some good noises. Doesn't sound very well, does it? Yeah, we've got flashing red light now. God. Let's try turning it off and on again. But it's not, it's not, it doesn't like it, does it? Right, well, I think we're going to have to take this apart. I'm guessing there's some kind of mechanical problem in there. Let's see if we can figure out what on earth is going on. I'm not sure whether it's going to go off now. Oh, yeah, we go. Has done. Okay. Oh, this is hmm. interesting. I think we've got some paper stuck in it. 
and that might explain the problem, mightn't it? Let's take this over. Let's take this over. Let's take this apart. It's been a long day. Yep. It's like a sticker and it's got stock. Let's just disconnect that from there. Right, let's see if we can get this out without breaking it. This is also Alps. Interesting. Or is it? It's properly stuck in there. I think I'm gonna to have to take this apart. It's not it's not coming. Oh wow. Didn't expect to see that in there. I'm guessing that's how it prints. Gonna need a good clean as well, I think. There we go. I'm just gonna clean it with some isopropyl alcohol and a baby cotton bud slash Q tip. That's right. It only appears to be moving this bottom cog. Ah, that sounded good. Yes, now it's moving them all. Right, let's give that a go now. Ho 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 ho! I think it only blooming works. Awesome. That's actually not bad quality either. Yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. Better than that one. Right, so that's that fixed. Let's move on to this. This is the Polaroid Snap without the, the touch screen. Is this the one that printed before? Am I wasting my time here? I can't remember. I think it might be, but let's just try it again. Let's take a picture of Dave, see if it comes out any better than the last one. Although, yeah, it wasn't Dave, was it? Was it that one? I think it was. Hey, Dave. It's a terrible, terrible picture. <laughs> I mean, I think that's Dave there, but it... Wow. Try, let's try it one more time. I must have done something there. It's taken, like, four pictures. And they're all terrible. I'm going to try one more time. Maybe I'm just not using it properly. I mean, these, these photos are just terrible, so I don't really know whether it's something to do with the settings, because obviously there's no screen on it, so you can't... Oh, is it set to... Right, hang on. That looks like colour. Don't know what that does. Flash? Okay. Well, I think it just took a picture then. Let's see if I just had it on terrible settings. I don't think so. That's just taking awful, awful pictures. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be anything I can do to fix that because what what's causing that I mean you would think it'd be something on the lens but the lens looks clean here well let's take it apart see if we can see anything but I don't think this one's going to be repairable I wonder whether that mechanism inside there is the same. It's warm, and I think that's how it prints. I think it it uses heat on this paper to heat up the whatever's inside here, some kind of crystals. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I wonder whether I can take maybe this one out of here. Is that 
Can we the same? No, that looks more like the one that was in the the little Polaroid zip thing, doesn't it? The one that was in here. I don't know. It might be similar. Let's let's carry on taking it apart for science. Question is: Is it the lens, or is it the printing part of it that's not working properly? Well, I'm just going to give it a quick clean. I'm going to clean the lens, I'll clean these rollers and stuff and see if that makes any difference, but I suspect something's gone awry in here and I don't think I'm going to be able to fix it. Well, he's trying to print again. There's no paper in it, so he's not going to. Oh, has worked. Who's that handsome chap? <laughs> Quite possibly the worst picture ever. I shall keep it. Right, I think it was, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but it's working. Maybe it was just some dirt on the lens. But there's a big difference between that one and that big fat faced one, isn't there? Right, well, I'll put everything back together here now, and I won't bore you with that because it's very, very boring. Well, that's it for the Polaroids. I managed to fix three out of the four here. That one, I think, with a new battery and a new battery charging module thing in it, I think that one will work as well. It's just whether I want to spend the money, and I don't think I do. I think my favourite device here, well, it's these two here, but I think I like this because you can just print stuff straight from your mobile which I think is really good. I think I'm going to look at the Instax ones in the next video, because these took me a lot longer than I thought. Shake it, 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 shake it